Jennifer and welcome back to my channel, the CRPS Network. Today I'm going to be talking about how some foods can affect your pain levels or inflammatory levels. I know a lot of people that have changed their diet, maybe they've gone vegetarian or adopted a paleo diet and swear by the effects that's had on their pain levels. So I wanted to talk about some of the worst foods and some of the best foods that you could try to incorporate more into your diet for lower inflammatory levels. Okay, first I'd like to go over the bad list. <laughs> These are things that we should try to keep to a minimum, although hard to avoid on some of them, but um, just limiting our intake can help with inflammation levels. Okay, the first category is sugar. I know this is probably an obvious one, but it's one of the most damaging in so many ways. This also includes high fructose corn syrup. So sugar is in so many things, things that you wouldn't even suspect. I mean, milk has sugar. There's so many things that you don't really think of as like a sweet treat that still contains sugar. So sometimes it's possible to eat a lot more sugar than we even are aware that we're having. Limiting sugar can help reduce your inflammation levels. It also, sugar counteracts the good things that omega fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids do for us. So it's not only doing harm, but counteracting the good. Okay, the next category are vegetable and seed oils. These include vegetable oil, corn oil, safflower, flour, safflower oil, sunflower seed oil, a peanut oil, sesame oil, these all promote inflammation. Okay, the next category is refined carbohydrates. And this could be anything white, white rice, white potatoes, white bread, crackers. They all contain refined carbohydrates and this can increase inflammation levels. Okay, the next category is processed meats. And this can include one of my favorites, bacon, but we have to uh, re limit our amounts of bacon that we have, unfortunately. But this can also include things like beef jerky, ham, um, sausage, any kind of those processed meats are not good for you. Okay, the next category is called monosodium glutamate otherwise known as MSG. And this is in a lot of products like Asian foods, soy sauce, salad dressings, soup mixes. MSG is not good for our bodies, can increase inflammation. So trying to limit the amount that you consume of that. Okay, and the last category is artificial trans fats or margarine. This is in a lot of baked goods like cookies and uh, frozen breakfasts. So limiting the amounts of that can be beneficial. Okay, now I wanna dive into the good list. What are some of the things that we should incorporate more into our diet that can help with inflammation levels? The first category, one of my favorites is berries. And this could be strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. I love all kinds of berries and it's great because they can help reduce inflammation levels. A couple of other fruits that are good, um, grapes are really good for you as far as inflammation levels and cherries also reduce inflammation. Okay, some vegetables that are good for you are the cauliflower family, like broccoli, cauliflower, kale. Also, Brussels sprouts is another one. A couple of other vegetables, um, chili peppers or bell peppers. They contain high amounts of vitamin C and antioxidants, as well as tomatoes. Same thing, lots of vitamin C and antioxidants. Another vegetable, one of my personal favorites, 
avocado. I love avocado. It's probably the one food, if I could only have one food the rest of my life, I would probably choose avocado. And it's great because it's a great source of monosaturated fats. So if you're looking for a good source of fats, avocado is great. Okay, another good vegetable is mushrooms. And some of the better strains of mushrooms are shiitake mushrooms, truffle mushrooms, also portobello mushrooms. Okay, a spice that is really good for you, turmeric. I know a lot of people that incorporate turmeric in their diet every day, whether it's in food or they mix it into a drink, but turmeric's been used for centuries, even back to the Egyptians used to use turmeric to help with pain relief. One more thing, and not really a food, but a drink, green tea. Green tea is high in antioxidants and can also help with inflammation. The next category is fatty fish. And some of the best fatty fishes are salmon, mackerel, herring, anchovies. All of these are really good for you and can help with inflammation. EVV, EVOO is a great oil if you are looking for an oil to cook with versus the seed or vegetable oils. EVOO is one of the healthiest oils. Okay, that's it for my list today. If you have any foods that I didn't list that are good for you or ones that you should try to stay away from, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I hope you found this video helpful and if so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I make new videos every week, so click on the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of when I make the next one. Till next time, take care.